Hello, my name is Stacey Calloway, and I'll be presenting my leadership project final report, planning a Constitution Day event at Rowan College at Gloucester County. The goal of the leadership project is to bring together members of the legal profession to serve as panel speakers for Constitution Day on September 17, 2019. The event will be held at Rowan College at Gloucester County and will target current and prospective students. The panel will consist of five members of the legal community, a judge, two attorneys, a paralegal, and a law enforcement officer. The goal of the event is to commemorate Constitution Day, an American federal observance that recognizes the adoption of the United States Constitution and those who have become U.S. citizens, and to expose students to the careers in law. Challenges were faced in identifying prospective panelists and the timing of the event. However, there was great success with positive feedback from the college leadership, exposure of the event among the college members, and the collaboration among panelists and administration. The future is marketing, which will begin at the end of this month. And the overall goal is that this event will turn into an annual celebration of Constitution Day. Rowan College at Gloucester County, RCGC, is an accredited public two-year community college in New Jersey with an enrollment of approximately 7,000 students. One of the more pressing concerns for the RCGC Strategic Planning Committee is the status of the college as compared to its competitors, especially for programs in the Law and Justice Division. The Law and Justice Division is overseen by one academic dean and consists of faculty that are practicing attorneys like myself, along with law enforcement officers. For Constitution Day, this is the American federal observance that recognizes the adoption of the United States Constitution. It's normally observed on September 17th, the day in 1787 that delegates to the Constitutional Convention signed the document in Philadelphia. The link between RCGC and Constitution Day is that under the Omnibus Spending Bill of 2004, all publicly funded educational institutions and all federal agencies are required to provide educational programming on the history of the U.S. Constitution. It applies to any school receiving federal funds of any kind, including RCGC, and this would be the first time that an event such as this will be held on campus. For project history, I'd like to focus on project activities and leadership activities. For project activities, this project began with idea generation. I spent several days brainstorming an event that would satisfy not only the parameters of this project for the course, but that could also immediately apply to my career endeavors. This led to creating a vision, the vision of spearheading an event that would be on my college campus. I then established the goal of having the event, as well as bringing on panelists that would speak to the Constitution. I then established an action plan, identifying key dates for objectives to be met. For leadership activities, this project challenged me in four areas, collaboration, persuasion, networking, and listening. For collaborating, the project required collaboration among the college leadership, dean, the president, marketing, and facilities, and my potential panelists. I needed to develop a list of appropriate questions and bring together a good mix of individuals to present on the careers in law. I was also challenged with my persuasion skills. This was critical as I needed to persuade the college leadership to hold the event. As an institution of higher learning, university leadership embraces the skill of learning. Strategic leaders promote a culture of inquiry and my college leadership encourages professional development for faculty, whether contributing payment towards another advanced degree or attending conferences or holding events on campus such as Constitution Day. The leadership recognizes that the skills learned through these activities will lead to more innovation inside the classroom, which will lead to higher enrollment and retention rates. Furthermore, faculty members can learn to become more effective teachers and leaders through professional development, which translates to better student outcomes. By using my rational persuasion skills, I was able to establish the importance of the event to our leadership and how it would benefit not only me as a leader, but the school and our students as a whole. This then challenged my networking skills. The project emphasized the importance of networking, a leadership skill that we learned in this class. We learned that there were three, three forms of networking, operational, personal, and strategic. Each of these has its place in leadership and management, though their overall importance can never be overstated. For example, it is likely that one's personal networking, along with some strategic networking, 
it's responsible for a manager or aspiring leader getting to where they are. Without our personal networks, opportunities remain at large and mentors may remain hidden. We are unable to leverage information to make judgment calls about which direction to move our organizations or the best manner in which to make those movements. Here, it was necessary for me to network with the institution, but also with my contacts in the legal field in order to come together for this event. I was also challenged by my listening skills. I needed to listen to others that have held events on campus and take into consideration for running such a successful event. For example, it was suggested to me the best location to hold the event as it had the equipment we needed. Also, I had to listen for ideas such as bringing in a caterer in order to entice not only my panelists, but also students to come to the event. The vision for this project was that when brainstorming my vision, my goal was to develop a clear vision not only for the leadership project, but for the event itself, as there are many benefits to a clear vision as it can have a positive impact on organizational effectiveness, employee engagement, and long-term strategic planning. Here, the vision of a Constitution Day provides a focal point for all stakeholders of the college. My vision defines the reason for the existence of the event. Furthermore, it provides my sense of worth and intent to all the stakeholders, students, panelists, faculty, and administration. The statements provide a way for all of the individuals within the college to identify themselves within the organizational process of the event itself. It gives the contributing stakeholders a sense of direction and meaning. Lastly, my vision helps to achieve clarity of the purpose and the roles that all individuals play within the organization, and it will help achieve synergy among everyone involved. One of my SMART goals was, of course, to design the Constitution Day, but also to establish measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely goals of contacting the potential panelists. By establishing a SMART goal, it helped identify my ideas, focus my efforts, use my time and resources productively, and to achieve what I wanted out of this project. I learned that when developing my SMART goal, I needed a goal that was specific, but yet achievable and realistic. After several revisions, this is my final SMART goal. I then created an action plan. It helped me establish objectives and key dates for these objectives to be accomplished. It also helped me to recognize that the big objectives are more manageable if broken down into specific steps. For example, by June 14th, I needed to reserve a space on campus to hold the event. While this seems like a very broad and simple goal, it entails several micro steps that also needed to be accomplished. In order to reserve the space on campus, I had to agree to event policies outlined in the event services policies and cancellation form. I also needed to schedule a meeting with another administrator on campus to discuss the event location and time. This entailed identifying the location on campus that can accommodate at least 100 people. I had to check the web calendar to prevent conflicts with other events and identify the time to hold the event. This included not just the event itself, but time to set up and break down. After meeting with the administrator, I then reserved the space using the online facilities, facilities reservation form. This included a request for audio and table and chair for panelists, as well as a request for catering services. I then had to allow enough time to wait for a confirmation from the registrar's office that the space had been reserved. This typically takes one business day. The action plan was critical because it establishes not just the key dates, but also all of the tasks that aligned with the dates and kept me organized as I worked towards the goal of establishing the event for September 17th. This project was not without its barriers and challenges. The first barrier was identifying panelists. I needed to identify appropriate panelists. My goal was to select individuals from a diverse background within the legal profession, a judge that could speak to constitutional issues, two attorneys, one that practices within constitutional law itself, as well as an attorney that was a product of our institution, also a paralegal that works for a local law firm, again, a product, a graduate of our college, and then lastly, a law enforcement officer. 
This was helpful because not only do we have the Gloucester County Police Academy on campus, but we also have the New Jersey State Police Crime Center on the campus. So many of the local law enforcement officers were willing to present and contribute to this event. My other challenge was simply one of timing. The response times varied among the panelists, and I'm still waiting for one potential panelist to commit. In the future, I would leave additional time to allow panelists or potential guests or speakers to commit to an event rather than just a couple of weeks of notice. <clears throat> the event did have a lot of success already. I have received positive feedback from my dean as well as the administration. The administration recognizes that not only will this event promote the programs within the law and division, law and justice division, but also it will promote RCGC and then thus lead to professional development for one of its own, myself. I've also already received success with exposure of the event. I'm already generating interest in the event through word of mouth and many of my students are excited to attend. Lastly, there was great success with collaboration. I was challenged to collaborate not only with my leadership at the college, but also members of the legal community. Networking and collaboration do not come easy to me, so this was a challenge both professionally but also personally. I did learn to leverage my networking skills. For example, I've spent many years developing a relationship with the head of catering at our college. This led to a quick meeting with him in which he agreed to cater the program for free. I really appreciated that and I learned the lesson that long-standing relationships can definitely pay off in the end. The current status of the program is, or the project, is that I'm pleased to share that as the date of this presentation, the date and facilities are reserved. Also, four of the five panelists are confirmed and marketing is being set to begin after July 1st. I did need to wait as the school is merging with another college and the marketing did not and the marketing department did not want to produce marketing material if our name would be changing. That was a barrier that I did not anticipate. A time for self-reflection and wrap up. Overall, this leadership project proved to be a successful endeavor in creating an event that brought together many stakeholders. I was tasked with idea generation, vision creation, goal setting, and establishing an action plan. It also proved to be a challenge for me as I worked on my leadership skills, a persuasion, collaboration, networking, and listening. Skills that do not always come easy to me, and that I'm constantly trying to tweak and improve. Lastly, the project has provided me with a foundation for taking on future leadership tasks in both my professional and personal life. I hope that I, through this project, that I will create an annual event that not only can I be proud of as an individual, but also as a member of my organization. Thank you.